Hey guys, today's video is on DeSata. Let me say right now that I do not get paid to endorse any product or company and my review of this product is going to be totally on my own opinion and experience. I know what you're thinking, who is DeSata? Well, they create head units for specific car brands and what I mean by that is that they have the trims which include holes for switches and vents that you would find in specific cars so that the head unit can go directly in as a direct replacement with all the relevant wiring looms and canvas decoding technologies included. This one is actually a generic head unit. It uh, comes in single or double din, but this one's a double din. So I'm gonna get it out of the box and then I'm going to connect it up to my studio jukebox test station and I'm gonna show you everything about it. So this is the 11.6 inch DeSata head unit. It comes in single din or double din. It also comes in a magnitude of different sizes. So it comes from anything from a seven inch all the way up to 13.3 inches. But as I say, this one is 11.6 inches. The first thing that I'll say about the unit is it's really heavy. Uh, the majority of the reason why it's heavy is because on the back, it has this huge metal bracket to hold it to the main unit. On the front, you have a built-in microphone, some capacitive touch buttons, and a reset button. One thing to note about this particular unit is this screen is a true 1080p resolution, 1920 by 1080. And that means it's one of the sharpest head units I've actually come in contact with. Generally speaking, even the big screen ones only have a resolution of around 600p. And to have one that's at 1080p means it's excellent quality. So here's the main unit, it's a standard double din. On the front of the face, it only has the bracket to hold the screen and the singular connector that we saw on the screen itself. And on the other side, we have the GPS antenna connector, the Wi-Fi antenna connector, the radio antenna connector, a variety of other weird connectors for the other inputs, which I will show you in a minute. And then finally, the main loom connector over here. There are two holes here and here where there are missing connectors. So this one is shaped like a HDMI port and it has the word in written underneath it. Unfortunately, this model doesn't have it. And then this other hole I assume is going to be for an optical output. This unit has a DSP chip in it anyway, so we're gonna get excellent audio from the existing connectors that it has. So also in the box we had a main loom, which I'm actually going to plug into the unit now. We have the Wi-Fi antenna. So I'm gonna just screw that on as well now. We have an external microphone, the GPS antenna, a couple of USB ports, another USB port making three total USB ports a audio and video input analog, and then the pre-outs for all of the car speakers. This also includes these blue and green connectors which are marked sub one and sub two, which is awesome um, because it means you can have two separately controlled subwoofers. You also have your reverse camera connection here as well and the reverse camera trigger. And finally, a 16 gigabyte micro SD card which contains the maps for the installed map software. The thing is, I cannot for the life of me find out where to put this on the unit. There doesn't seem to be a micro SD input. I must be blind. So the first thing we need to do is plug the screen into the double din unit. So I'm going to do that now. So it's just literally very carefully one goes into the other. 
like that and you will notice that the holes in the bracket will then line up. Now it is a matter of putting some screws in to hold it in place. There we go, so that's now pretty sturdily on the main unit. Okay, so let's switch it on. So you can see that the standard navigation system has uh, is being displayed. The SATA main brand name has now come up. Vivid. So straight away you can see that this is not an Android tablet type of dashboard. That's what you get with a lot of Android based head units. It's just standard Android background, standard Android buttons, menus, etc. But what the SATA have done here is they have implemented this Vivid launcher. I've never heard of Vivid before, but they seem to have designed this very, very stylish dashboard, which has a map on one side and the audio properties on the other. So they've obviously styled it after Apple CarPlay, which has a similar design. And the whole thing is pretty fast to react. So on the music side of things, on the right hand side here, you can see that the radio stations are represented by large colorful icons, which I think is a nice uh, touch. And if you, if you touch one of these, it starts playing music from that particular radio station. So that's pretty cool. But at the same time, the uh, audio side of it here allows you to flick over to local music, to any music that you might have installed on the unit itself or on a USB stick that you can plug into it. And then of course, if you're running something like Spotify, which I have installed in here, you can control the Spotify as well in the app on the dashboard as well. In the Vivid Launcher, you can access your apps by hitting this button down here and you can see that they've automatically grouped the apps by the type. They're in their individual folders here. And I haven't seen that in any other Android head unit, so that's pretty cool. The actual folders that they've created in the app section, you cannot modify, drag and drop or do anything with it. You have, it has no customizability. The high resolution screen looks great when you're running applications such as Spotify. You can see that it's utilizing the full 1080p display, which is really, really nice. It looks sharp. And the same goes for other applications such as Netflix. Another issue with the Vivid Launcher is that when you're trying to watch a video, it actually overlays the video itself with the little widget thing. So uh, that's not great and I can't find a way of actually switching that off. So let's have a look at the audio functionality. Crucially, the Deceta has DSP, which is digital signal processing. This means that you have more control over the audio in your car and how it sounds. They haven't stepped away from the generic DSP settings from the Android head unit, so you get a 15 band graphical equalizer, as you can see here, with different presets available here. You can adjust any of these bars and then you can save it on the three savable memory points here. In the second option, you have the ability to control other aspects of the sound quality, and that's loudness, fat, the cutoff frequencies, bass frequencies, and then a separate control for the subwoofer. And then finally, you have access to the standard fade and balance options here, uh, but also on top of that, you can click the speciality button, and it will allow you to individually control the volume of the speakers within the car. So from a sound quality perspective, it does actually sound really, really good. You do have the option of either connecting it via the standard harness, and they do give you pre-outs as well. From a vehicle integration perspective, you have the ability to set the steering wheel controls by going into the car settings and then into steering wheel keys. So very much like any other Android-based head unit. So as soon as you've connected your head unit to a canvas decoder for your vehicle, you can program your buttons using this app. And then in the factory settings, uh, where the password is 126, which is exactly the same as pretty much every other head unit, you have the ability to change the car logo here. Unfortunately, they don't give you a list of car logos for you to choose from and just apply. You would actually have to find the car logo, make it into an image, put it on this unit, and then attach it to uh, this app uh, so that it will start up with the unit. 
And then under the canvas section of this menu, you actually have the ability to choose from multiple car brands. Again, this is very good because it means that the Deceta could potentially not only deal with just steering controls, but also read other canvas messages such as reading climate controls and other features of the car. So let's talk about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of these are wireless with this Deceta unit, which is awesome. They're really, really good features to have. And all you need to do is connect your phone to this unit using Bluetooth, and then the Deceta unit will do everything else itself. And there you go. So now we have wireless Android Auto on the Deceta unit, which is excellent, as I say. Now there is something that is a little bit disappointing. If you look at the enormous non-sharp buttons that you can see on this unit, it means that the resolution that is streaming from my phone is low. You have a 1080p large 11 inch screen here with probably a 300p image from uh, Android Auto and everything just doesn't look very sharp at all. Now, to say they should be able to fix this with an update so that it allows 1080p streaming. So hopefully that is something that they will do in the, in the near future. But that doesn't take away from the fact that Android Auto actually works and you have access to all of your compatible apps uh, through wireless Android Auto. Now, from an Apple CarPlay perspective, all you need to do is connect this unit via Bluetooth and select Use CarPlay and it should automatically connect as well. So we're just gonna look at that now. There we go. So now we have Apple CarPlay on this Deceta unit again. Very, very good in that respect. You, you have access to your compatible apps. You can control your music and everything directly from your phone completely wirelessly, okay? And what more can you ask for? Now the Vivid Launcher is still under development and there's a few niggly things that need to be addressed. The first is the whole left side of the launcher dashboard here is a map, but we have no control over this map for navigation purposes whatsoever. It does have a search bar here, but if I type in say London, it doesn't come up with anything. In, in actual fact, it doesn't even try to search for anything. It just says we, didn't, we couldn't find what you were searching for. So this Google Map is not linked to the actual app Google Maps, and that is massively unfortunate. Now I have been in contact with this data and they did tell me that Vivid, the designers of this dashboard software, is going to be releasing an update which is gonna resolve that particular issue. But all we've really talked about at the moment is the Vivid Launcher, which is a piece of software on this Android head unit. The Android head unit from Deceta itself is not limited to what the Vivid Launcher can do, and that's a very important thing to state. You can always change the launcher and run something else if you didn't like it. Okay, so let's give it some scores. So from a look and feel perspective, it does look very, very nice indeed. They have given you capacitive touch buttons along the side, which I really like as well. Then from a software perspective, the Vivid Launcher does make it look very attractive too. However, there are some very significant unfinished aspects of the Vivid Launcher, plus the Android Auto they are streaming at a low resolution. For this reason, I'm gonna give the unit a five, but that might change in the future if updates correct these things. The speed of the unit is pretty quick, but that's something that I would expect because it has a px6 and four gigabytes of memory i'm going to give it a seven now from a vehicle integration perspective deceta actually does do some amazing aftermarket units for specific vehicles where they just fit in and work and they have the logos already set up and those particular units would score very highly but because this is a doubled in unit in its generic and it should go into any vehicle that you want it to go into there should be options for you to change settings to suit any vehicle and that's what this score is going to be based on it has a standard Android canvas wheel control options and it also has listed specific car canvas networks which will allow for integration with other systems such as climate controls. However, all the canvas
camera settings are all the standard Android variation and Deseda hasn't actually done anything to improve the user interface to make these things easier. Plus there's no proper boot logo change option. So from a vehicle integration perspective, I'm just gonna score it a six. From a features perspective, it does have wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, which is awesome despite the resolution problems. So I'm gonna give it a seven. From a connectivity perspective, it has aux in, video and audio. It has the low level outputs, it has subwoofer controls, but no digital video or digital audio input or output. So I'm gonna give it a seven. And then from the sound perspective, they did give you a DSP chip. The graphic interface is very much the standard Android variation for DSP. Disator De haven't given you anything extra in that regard, but it does sound excellent. So I'm gonna give it a seven. Thank you